Number 25, write the formulas of the following compounds. And then we have A through H. Okay, so number 23 and 24, we actually took the compounds and we uh, wrote the compound name. But in this case, we're going backwards. In this case, they gave us the compound name and now we just have to write the formula. So two different ways. And we always got to start from the top. You always should know firsthand whether it's ionic or whether it's a covalent molecule first. Then you can use that information to know how to get the formula. And remember that ionic compounds are always metals plus a nonmetal. And there will always be a ionic uh, bond if you have two polyatomics coming together as well. Now, for polyatomics, when two polyatomics come together, you will have both ionic bonds and you'll have covalent bonds. But if you have two polyatomics, that will be a way of ionic bonding as well. So you'll do the same exact method as ionic. But if that comes into play, then we'll talk about it then. Okay, so for A, they tell us that we have rubidium bromide. Okay, so first we got to find out if rubidium bromide would be ionic or whether it would be covalent. Rubidium is right here. Rubidium is a metal. And as soon as you see a metal, the only bond that has a metal in it, right, is an ionic bond. So this would be an ionic compound. So, so now, how do we write the formulas for ionic compounds? We use the crisscross method. And this comes from knowing the oxidation states. So we went over that before, right, guys? Oxidation states, it's just a trend. And it goes like this. Group one is always a plus one charge. Group two is always a plus two. Transition metals do not have this trend, so there's no numbers for those. And then it goes plus three, plus or minus four. And then you go backwards with negative three, negative two, negative one, and zero. You will use these oxidation states to crisscross to find out how many of each atom you need. So rubidium is Rb, and that's in group one. So that's a plus one. So I can put a plus one up here. Bromine or bromide comes from bromine. Bromine is over here, and that's a negative one. So Br minus one. And now you will use the charges, the plus one and the minus one, to crisscross to tell you how many of each you need. This plus one crisscrosses down to tell me that I only need one bromine. And when you crisscross, you forget about the positives and the negatives. You only look at like the absolute number, one or two or three or four, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing with the negative one. The one crisscrosses down telling me that I only need one rubidium. So it's a one to one. So that means that this compound would be RBBR. B, yeah, RBBR. And that's it. So rubidium bromide would be RBBR, and that checks out. B, magnesium selenide. Ionic or covalent. Magnesium is over here. That's a metal, so that's automatically ionic, and that's the crisscross method. So we need to take the charges. Magnesium because it's in group two, is a plus two charge, right? Because it's over here. And selenide comes from selenium, right? So selenide is selenium, and selenium is over here. That's a negative two. So Se with the negative two charge. Now you use the charges to crisscross down to see how many of each you need. So the plus two crisscrosses, it tells me that I need two seleniums. The negative two will crisscross down, telling me that I need two magnesiums. And then when you do that, these charges basically vanish. So you can kind of see the makings of the compound. However, 
for ionic compounds, you will always simplify. That's a difference between ionic and covalent. Covalent, you never simplify. Only simplify for ionic compounds. So it's two and two. Can I divide these numbers by a number to get them down to being a simpler number? Yeah, I could both divide by two. And then I would get one and one. So this would be Mg1. We don't really write the one though. Se. And that's the answer for the second part. So this would be Mg Se. And B is done. Okay, let's keep moving. Just erase. Okie dokie. C. We have sodium oxide. So first we have to find out if it's ionic or covalent. Sodium is over here. It's a metal, so it's ionic. So we got to do the crisscross method. Sodium is Na, and it's in group one, so that's a plus one. Oxygen, oxide, is O, and it's over here. It's a negative two. Now we crisscross. Plus one tells me that I need one oxygen. The two tells me that I need two nitrogen, uh, not nitrogens, two sodiums. Even sometimes I get them confused. And there's a two to one ratio. Is that simplified? Yeah. Anytime that you see a one in your formula, it's always going to be the empirical formula, the most simplified. So that's the end for this one. It would be N, whoop, Na2O. And remember, when you do the crisscross, the charges vanish because you use them as your subscripts. So this would be Na2O. And that's C. Moving on to D. Calcium whoop, chloride. Calcium is over here. It's a metal, so it's automatically ionic. So we need to find out what the charges are. Calcium is Ca, and it's over here. It's a plus two charge, so that's a plus two. Chloride comes from chlorine. Right, and Cl's all the way over here, so that's a minus one. And now we're ready to crisscross. The plus two, or the two, tells me that I need two chlorines. The negative one tells me that I need one calcium. I see a one in my compound, so it's the most simplified form. And when you do the crisscross, the charges cancel. And now it tells me that I have Ca1, but we don't really write the run. So it'd be CaCl2, calcium chloride. C-A-C-L-2, and D's done. Next, let's erase this. Next one is E, hydrogen fluoride. Okay, so let's see, hydrogen's over here. That's a non-metal. Fluoride comes from fluorine, which is over here. So this is the first covalent compound that we have. Now, what type of covalent compound is this? I see that I have a hydrogen in the front, so I know that this has to be some sort of acid. Now, there's two types of covalent compound acids. There's oxoacids and there are binary acids. Which one is this one? Well, it's just hydrogen, so that's one element, and then it's just fluorine, so that's another element, and binary, bi means two in chemistry, so this would be a binary acid. So now we're following the rules of binary acids. So with binary acids, with hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen just represents that it's H, fluoride is F. And now, for this one, if you really want to just make sure that you have it right, you can crisscross for your binary acids. So we could just do like a double check. Hydrogen was a plus one because it's in group one. And fluorine is over here. It's a negative one. So that's a minus one. And then the plus one tells me I need one fluorine. The negative one tells me I need one hydrogen. So there it is again, HF. Now. 
binary acids come in two different ways. They could be gases and they could be aqueous. Which way is hydrogen fluoride? That is always the gas way. Aqueous would have been hydrofluoric acid. Since they named it hydrogen fluoride, I have to say that HF is a gas. I can't say that it is aqueous. That would be wrong. So this has to be a gas. And that's the answer for E. So this would be a gas. F. Gallium phosphide. Okay, so where is gallium? Gallium is G-A. Gallium is over here. Oh, it's a metal. It's got to be ionic. So we have to do the crisscross method. So gallium, just like we said before, gallium is G-A, and gallium is a plus three because it's in this group. Phosphide comes from phosphorus, and phosphorus is a nonmetal, and that's a negative three. Now, keep in mind that for all of these, if you haven't noticed, one always has to be a plus charge. The other one always has to be a negative charge. If you ever end up with two positives or two negatives, go back. Something went wrong. But anyway, we have to simplify or crisscross and then simplify. This plus three tells me I need three phosphorus. This minus three tells me that I need three galliums. The positive and the negative cancel. And now between three and three, can I simplify this? Yes, I can. I could divide each one by three and it turns into one to one ratio. So this would be G-A-P, gap. <laughs> so G-A capital P. And then last two. Just erase this. Last two, we have aluminum bromide. So this is G, aluminum bromide. Okay, so aluminum is over here. It's a metal, so it's automatically going to be ionic. So let's get those charges. Aluminum is Al, and aluminum is in the plus three charge. So that's a plus three up top here. Bromine comes from the bromide, right? So that's Br, and Br was a minus one. So we have the charges, now we're ready to crisscross. Plus three crisscrosses tells me that I need three bromines. The one crisscrosses tells me that I need one aluminum. I see a one there, it's an empirical formula. It's the most simplified. So this would just turn into AlBr3. Remember, you don't have to put the one there. So this would just be AlBr3. Three. And then last but not least, we have H, ammonium sulfate. Okay. Ammonium, 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 ammonium. I'm looking at the periodic table. I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't see anything that says ammonium. All right. Well, maybe I ju I'm just not seeing it. Let me look for sulfate. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking on the periodic table. Nothing. What does that mean? If the words that you see here are not on the periodic table, that means that they're polyatomics, hence polyatomic ions. Now, you have to memorize your polyatomic ions. I don't know if your professor or your teacher will give you them. They might, but they might not. In that case, you have to memorize them. And there really is no rhyme or reason as to, you know, where they came up with the names and so it, you really just have to, you know, buckle down and memorize that ammonium is NH4. There's one nitrogen, there's four hydrogens with the plus one charge. For sulfate, it's always SO4 with the minus two charge. The good thing is that these polyatomics will never, ever, 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 ever change. So if you can memorize them and rememberize the names, you will have them down pat. So ammonium, from my knowledge of the polyatomic ions, ammonium is always an NH4 plus one charge, and sulfate is SO4 two minus. And remember when I said before that ionic compounds are metal and nonmetal, but it could also be two polyatomics? This is where we will use the crisscross method, because I have the charges, to find out this compound. 
So the one crisscrosses down, telling me that I only need one whole sulfate, but the two crisscrosses down, telling me that I need two whole ammoniums. When you have two or more polyatomics, you need to put them in parentheses. So it would be parentheses NH4, because that's ammonium, two, there's two of this whole thing, and then there's only one sulfate, so I don't have to put the one there, so it'd be just SO4. But that's the answer for this one. NH4, 2, SO4, and that's all of these. Whew. This one was fun. What do you guys think? Hopefully you guys are getting it. Let me know in the comments if there is any other way that I maybe can get to you guys, or if you're having a little bit of trouble, let me know. I'll always try to help you out. I'll answer you guys in the comments of what you think. Um, and if I warranted your subscription today, feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much. Um, that really helps the channel out. And you know, I love making these videos for you guys. My brother loves making the physics videos. If you guys need those as well. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.